Let's get the coach's insight. Coach Anthony Medina from University of St. Thomas. How you doing, sir? Hey, I'm good, Richie. Thanks for having me, brother. You bet. I know you're a great player as well as coach because you graduated with like four school records, and now you still hold three-pointers made records. So game of horse, me and you. Uh, I like my chances, man. <laughs> you play, I like my chances. I like it, man. Well, hey, I read an article that you had written, uh, like a blog post last week or so. It was about recruiting on the small college level. You've got to talk about that because you've done a good job there at St. Thomas. I appreciate it. Thanks. You know, and one of the things that I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, people approach me and ask the question, you know, how can I get my son and or daughter recruited? And I feel like I've answered that question so many times. So I finally put it down on paper and hopefully kind of broke down the different levels of being recruited at small college. It's just so different because at this level, you're not dealing with full athletic scholarships everywhere you go. You're dealing with financial packages. You're dealing with academics. There's so many different uh, aspects to it that people don't even understand. Yeah, like most D1 kids can show up, be seen, and, wow, that's a great player. But what factors should kids and coaches like yourself consider when recruiting at the small college level? Uh, first things first is academics. You know, you can't get away from that. There are academic standards that the NAI and NCAA have. If your GPA is not in the right place, if your test score is not in the right place, it really doesn't matter how good you are. Um, it, your athleticism and your skill set go unnoticed if we can't get you into school anyway. And, and that's the first step. You know, second is building your game. You know, those two things that I just mentioned, it's getting yourself in the weight room, developing your body, and becoming a better player. You know, if you can do those two things and you've got those things in place, steps three and four become a lot easier. Uh, step three is self-promotion. You know, if you can promote yourself, put together a profile, and reach out to college coaches, you're giving them an opportunity to make a decision on you. You know, yes, I'm interested. No, I'm not. But if you don't reach out, we don't even know that you're there most of the time. There's a million kids playing college, high school basketball right now. That's right. There's 552,000 high school basketball players. There's 27,000 college basketball players. That's 4.2% of high school players playing in college. Knowing those statistics that you know, what are some of the primary ways that players can differentiate themselves from other players? Uh, there's a couple of different things. Now, obviously, academics and all those things are great, and reaching out and self-promotion is important. And, you know, once you get to those events, there's a few things that different coaches will look for. Now, you may like a different player than I would like. You know, you may like a big, strong point guard. I may like, I may like a little quick one. Um, but at the end of the day, there's a few things that every college coach wants and will look for. You know, if they see that you don't play hard, if they see that you're not a good teammate, that you don't communicate well with your coaches, you know, those are things that make you unrecruitable. Now, whether or not you fit the box that Coach Schuler's recruiting to or the box that I'm recruiting to, um, it may be completely different. But I'll tell you one thing, guys that don't play hard don't get recruited very often. Yeah, coaches are looking for that all the time, as I'm sure you are. A lot of guys like yourself will take work ethic over ability level almost any, every time. Absolutely. And then the, other, the last piece of it is once we get you here, how much are you going to develop? You know, we don't have full athletic scholarships. The obvious guys out there are big and strong and skilled. And, you know, we need guys that will come in here and develop. You know, two, three years down the road, how much bigger and stronger will you be? You know, how hard are you going to work at your footwork and your, you know, and, and being a passer and a, and a shooter? You know, there's a lot of different things that guys don't really consider. Well, once guys have some options, suppose they have a few offers or opportunities to play on college rosters, you know, what are some of the things that they should weigh and, and go into a school? I, I say visit. I, I say visit. And then some of the things you want to look at, what's the city like? You know, you're going to be, you'll spend time on campus, but you're going to be living in this city for the next four years. That's important. Um, the culture on campus, you know, what are the students like? What are the professors like? What's that, you know, how is athletics viewed on your campus? Right. Um, and then finally, it, it's a feel. It's really almost a gut thing. You know, when you're walking around on campus, is it a place that you think that you can be for the next four years? Because that's where you're going to be. I like that. Okay. Hey, I appreciate you coming on. I'm going to call you Anthony Funky Cold Medina. Awful. That's awful. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> All right. Anthony Medina from St. Thomas. Appreciate you coming on. All right. Thanks for having me, man.